Those of you who have set up secure web services with SSL know and understand the pain of dealing with SSL certificates. You have to order these certificates up front and then have an entire team sit on a conference bridge to rotate these certificates to avoid accidental downtime. And it's not rotating on just one server, but sometimes it's many servers across your entire organization, which scales the level of pain when dealing with these certificates. So what if we could set up a secure HTTP web server and have it automatically obtain its own browser trusted certificate without any human intervention automated for free well how does it work web servers are usually hosted behind a domain for let's encrypt to work we have to prove that we own the domain this step is called domain validation on Google domains, I have this domain that I own. Now, if I click on my domain and I go to DNS and I scroll down, you can see it's currently pointing to an IP address. So you can see I pointed my DNS to my web server using an A record. Now you can use a C name, you can point it to an Azure load balancer, an Amazon EC2 instance, or Google Kubernetes. You can even point it to a Kubernetes ingress controller. It doesn't really matter. You can even point it to your WordPress website that you're hosting at home. To validate your domain, Let's Encrypt identifies us using a public key. It asks us to complete a set of challenges. We would run a utility on our web server to prove that we own the server, since the domain points to it. Let's Encrypt will ask us to place a file on the web server at a given path. By adding the file to the server, we're proving that we are the server admin, and we verify this by signing a nonce. Let's Encrypt will make a web request to get the file and make sure it has the expected content and will verify the signature on the provided nonce. Once the challenges are complete and verified by the CA, our utility that's identified by the key pair is authorized to do certificate management on our domain. So let's see what it takes to issue secure certificates using Let's Encrypt. So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a security folder and under that I have a Let's Encrypt folder with an introduction folder. In here I have a readme and this lists out all the steps that I'm going to show you guys today. And this will help us build a fundamental understanding about how certificate issuing works using Let's Encrypt. And then in a future video, we can take this knowledge and provision certificates on something like a Kubernetes ingress controller. So be sure to check out the links to the source code down below so you can follow along. So let's get a simple HTTP web server running on port 80. So to do that, I'm going to say docker run. I'm going to expose port 80 and I'm going to run nginx as my web server. That'll start up a container with nginx. And in a separate terminal, I need the public IP address that points to this web server. So I'm just going to say curl ifconfig.co and we can see we have an IP address here for the web server. And if we open up the browser, we can access that IP address. We can see we have an insecure nginx web server running on port 80. So you can see it's very simple to get a server up and running running using a Docker container and access it over the internet. So now we have a web server, it has an IP address. So let's go ahead and point our DNS to this IP address. So now if I go back to Google domains and I click on my domain and I go to DNS and I scroll down to custom records, I can go to my Nginx server, grab the IP address and I can go ahead and edit this record and paste the IP address in the box. And let's go ahead and save that. And this will take some time to complete, but after that, our DNS will be pointing to that IP. And after some time, DNS gets updated, and we can now see that if we ping the domain, it resolves to our new IP address. And this time, if we access our server, we can see we can access it over the DNS record, but it's still insecure. The next step is to start the domain validation process. For this, we need that Let's Encrypt utility. The utility is called CertBot. CertBot is the tool that automates the Let's Encrypt challenge process, certificate issuing, and the renewal process. We simply have to run CertBot behind our domain to prove that we own it. CertBot will request a certificate challenge from Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt will ask us to place a file behind the domain over a path somewhere. Let's Encrypt will issue a nonce. CertBot will generate the file and sign the nonce. It'll let the CA know we're done and the certificate will be issued to CertBot. So with CertBot, the best place to start is the documentation. CertBot has really awesome documentation with really clear instructions on how to get CertBot running anywhere on any system. It has really clear instructions on how to install CertBot, how to get a certificate, and how to renew the certificate. Now, although my example web server is running Nginx, in this demo, I'm going to select none of the above. This is because as part of this demo, I want to show you how to issue a certificate that you can use almost anywhere, not just Nginx. So we'll 
we'll take a look at the installation process. And since most of you probably already have a web server, we'll take a look at how to issue a certificate with an existing web server that's running. So let's see what it takes to have CertBot issue us certificates. So to do that, what I'm going to do is install CertBot using a Docker container. So I'm going to change directory into the security Let's Encrypt introduction folder. And in here, I have a Docker file. So you can see this very simple Debian container that I use to install CertBot. So to build this, I'm going to say docker build dot minus T. I'm going to tag it as CertBot. This is going to go ahead and build a Debian container with CertBot that we can run to issue certificates for our web server. Now I have all the instructions listed here. So to run this container, it's very simple. I just say docker run minus IT minus RM. I give the name CertBot and I mount two very important folders into the container. Now the first one is very simple because we're running CertBot and our web server in a container. We need some common folder that can be shared between the two containers. So I'm just mounting a shared folder called slash let's encrypt. So this is a common folder that both our Nginx web server and CertBot can access. Now what this let's encrypt folder is used for is basically just the challenges for let's encrypt. As part of domain validation, let's encrypt will ask us to play some files on our web server. Our CertBot will spit out the files to this let's encrypt folder and our web server will be able to serve these files up. Now also remember in a production environment, you may have many web servers running, not just one, and they may be running behind a load balancer. So you don't want every single web server instance to be generating a certificate. So the best practice is to have one cert bot and then have a shared volume so you can just serve the files up to Let's Encrypt. And then you can either manually copy the generated certificates or you can have another shared volume where you can share these certificates with your web servers. And the key here is that we want one cert bot instance to generate the certificate and then either copy or distribute them using a volume to each of our web server instances. The next volume is very simple. We're going to be mounting a local folder called certs. You can see it on the left here. I have a placeholder for that folder and we're going to mount it to etc let's encrypt. This is the folder that let's encrypt uses to store all its data as well as the certificates that it generates. So we're going to want to persist this folder as well. Every time certbot does certificate renewal, it will keep updating this folder. So it's critical to make a backup of this folder or have it persisted somewhere using something like a Docker volume, an NFS share or persisted volume in Kubernetes. So to run my certbot container, I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to paste it in the terminal. And to test if it's working, I can just say certbot and we can see certbot is installed. Now CertBot is ready to issue certificates. The first thing CertBot will do is start the Let's Encrypt challenge process. Let's Encrypt will ask CertBot to serve a file on a path. Since we're running CertBot in a separate container, we've already shared a common folder where CertBot can dump the files and our web server will have access to that common folder as well. It can serve the files to Let's Encrypt. Now for my web server that I'm running here, I have a stock standard Nginx configuration file on the left side here. Now this web server at the moment only serves an index.html file. Our web server does not know anything about Let's Encrypt and how to share any files to Let's Encrypt. So the first change we need to do is to tell our web server where to serve any challenge files that Let's Encrypt asks us to serve. So this is what the path will look like when Let's Encrypt issues us the challenge. And what we will do is we'll tell our web server to serve these files from our Let's Encrypt folder that we've mounted into the container. Container. This is the folder that CertBot will write the challenge files to. Our web server will then be easily able to share that file and serve it up to Let's Encrypt. Now when the challenge request comes from Let's Encrypt, our web server will know where to serve the files from. So it does not matter how many instances we run behind a load balancer since they will all share this common path. CertBot will write the requested challenge files here. So now that we've modified our Nginx configuration, I'm going to go ahead and run our web server again. So I'm going to say CD change directory to our Let's Encrypt introduction folder, and I'm going to mount this Nginx config into our Nginx container. So to run our Nginx container, I'm going to say Docker run. I'm going to call the container Nginx. I'm going to mount in our Nginx configuration. I'm also going to mount the two folders for our CertBot. The first folder is the folder where CertBot will write the challenge files. So this Nginx will serve these up to 
let's encrypt and the second one is where we will finally get access to the ssl certificate i'm also going to expose port 80 and since we're going to be enabling ssl i'm going to also expose port 443 so to run the container i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste it into the terminal so if i go back to the browser we can see our web server is now up and running but it's still insecure so let's see what it takes to issue a certificate so to do that i'm going to hop back into my certbot container and i'm going to say certbot cert only web root it's going to ask me for an email address i can agree to the terms of service i can opt out of the news i then type in the domain we wish to issue a certificate for and we can see it's starting to perform the challenge and now it's looking for the web root for the certificate this is the folder where nginx will be serving the challenges from so since we mounted the folder called let's encrypt we have to tell certbot that we want to use the slash let's encrypt folder as our web root and when we do so it'll go ahead and push those files to that folder and it will start the verification process and you can see here congratulations your certificate has been saved and the default location for storing certificates is under the etc let's encrypt folder this is the folder that we mounted into certbot as well as nginx so nginx now our web server has access to those ssl certificates and it stores these under a live folder with the name of the domain and then you'll see a bunch of certificates in that folder because we've created a docker mount we can see those files been created in the search directory we can see the live folder we can see our domain folder and all the certificates and private keys have been generated in this docker volume so as i said before it's very important to back up this folder or create some kind of persistent storage like a network share or something that you can share with all your web servers so now we don't have to copy these to our web servers since they all have this mounted in our web server can just access it even if they're running behind a load balancer so now that we have our ssl certificates issued all we need to do is tell our web server to turn on ssl and tell it where that certificate is located so to do that i go to my nginx configuration file and i just create a new server block and in the server block i enable port 443 i tell it that i want ssl on i give it a server name and this is the domain name it's going to be expecting traffic on and i pass in two certificate paths one is to the full chain pem file and the other one is to the private key and then i just have a copied location here to serve a static file so this is how you enable ssl on nginx and use our let's encrypt certificate so to enable that now i'm just going to have to restart that container mount in those certificates and the container is running and if i go back to the browser and i use https in front of the url we can see now we have a secure web server running with a valid certificate we can see that the certificate will expire in three months and it's issued by let's encrypt so the general idea is to have CertBot with its own storage monitor its local certificate. This can be done with a cron job. When we run the certificate renew command at various intervals, it can automatically renew that certificate with Let's Encrypt. We can then either copy this manually to all our web servers, or we can have some kind of shared volume to distribute the certificates. So to renew the certificate, all we need to do is run certbot renew. And we can see because we've mounted in our certificate folder, certbot will see that the cert is not yet due for renewal. So this allows us to put this stuff in a cron job and at various intervals we can run this. And when the certificate is due for renewal, certbot will go ahead and update the certificate in the local file system. We can also test this using a dry run. So we can say certbot renew dry run, and this will basically practice the process to make sure it's working. So this will go ahead and issue the challenge wait for verification and then clean up the challenge and then pretend to issue a new certificate now if your web server is running and there's a new ssl cert that's been generated you may have to go and tell your web server to reload that certificate now nginx has a graceful reload command and i can execute that using docker exec so if i run that that'll send a signal through to our container to tell nginx to reload its configuration so it'll pick up the new certificates automatically now this highly depends on your setup and what sort of web server you're running there are different various plugins for let's encrypt as well that will automatically do this rotation for you as well depending on the web server that you're running you can also use your existing automation and if you have something like ssh commands that you can run on your various servers or you have other automation tools you can use that as well and if you're running your applications in kubernetes you might want to update your cron job to store this ssl certificate inside of a kubernetes secret and then have a mechanism to restart those pods gracefully some ingress controllers also has the 
capability to automatically pick up certificates when they are updated inside of Kubernetes secrets. So I hope this video helped you guys understand the fundamentals of Let's Encrypt and CertBot and how to automate the process of issuing and renewing certificates for your web servers. Now, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe as I'll we'll take a deeper dive in how to use Let's Encrypt on services like ingress controllers on Kubernetes. And let me know down in the comments what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future. And also check the link down below to the community server if you want to join the community. And if you want to support the channel even further, be sure to check out the join button down below to become a member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.